Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 70725, Ninjoid Mech Dragon from the LEGO Ninjago Rebooted Wave. This set contains 691 pieces, 5 minifigures, and originally retailed for $89.99 in the US when it first released back in 2014. This video is of course a part of my Ninjago throwback review series, so let me know in the comments which set you want to see a throwback review on next. It could be any set from 2011 to 2018, and while I don't have them all, I do have a lot of them. So let me know which one you want to see most, and it might just be selected for the next Ninjago throwback review. If you want to see which reviews I've already done, I'll have a full playlist linked in the description and the pinned comment of this video. But now, with all that being said, let's get into the review. Real quick, something completely unrelated to the actual review, um, I actually just bought a brand new camera, this is my first video using it, and the idea behind it is hopefully the videos will look a little bit nicer now, so let me know in the comments if you guys notice anything different, or if there's anything that seems weird and off to you. Before this, I've just been shooting everything on my phone throughout the entirety of the channel, and I mean, iPhones have a nice camera, but theoretically, with how much I spent on this, this should look nicer. But yeah, if anything looks better or worse in the video, that's probably why, so if you guys have any feedback on the new camera setup, let me know. But alrighty, like, look at this zoom, this is so nice. I'm very excited to be using this. But now let's talk about the actual set. So the main build of this set is, of course, the Ninjoid Mech Dragon. It's the name of the set. But then there's also a fairly significant side build off to the side, and that's like the little car for Lloyd and Sensei Garmadon. So I guess we'll start things off by taking a look at the main build, so I'll get this out of the way. The Ninjoid Mech Dragon is definitely weird. The shaping of it just feels very odd to me. I believe this is the first Ninjago Dragon with a brick-built head, right? They were all molded in 2011, 2012, and 2013 with the Golden Dragon. So yeah, this was the first one to use a brick-built head, and obviously it's also a Mech Dragon, so it's not meant to look as organic, like it's made to be very robotic. And I think LEGO did a fairly good job for the first time. This red plate does a pretty good job to represent the dragon's eyes, and I think that's a fairly creative technique, too. The hinging jaw is also very nice, of course, a very common thing we see nowadays, but again, I believe this is the first Ninjago dragon to ever do that, because the old molded heads, you just squeeze them and they'd shoot a ball out. You couldn't actually, like, open and close the mouth. There's some nice stickers here, too, like I like the metal plating on the side of the head as well as the top of the head, and there's also a little bit inside the mouth. But all that being said, it's definitely clear this is one of the first brick-built dragon heads. It feels a little bit flat to me, which again, works better for a mech dragon than it would like an organic dragon, but I don't know, I I think they definitely could have made this more interesting looking. The back of the head too, I feel like just cuts off too early, like some horns or something back here would have been really, really nice to see. That's a fairly easy customization to make though if you wanted to. I do like the metal tooth pieces on the side, those are very fun. So yeah, I respect it a lot for being the first, but I definitely think Future Dragons improved upon the whole like brick built head idea. There's a tiny little neck on this build which connects to two different ball joints. That I believe is an SCCBS part, which I don't think is in production anymore. But that's a very simple, very small way to get a lot of articulation out of this guy. Because each section moves independently. So there's a good bit of personality you can get out of the build. Have the head all the way down here like this, or the opposite, having it up and like looking down. Obviously very simple technique, but it's quite sturdy and effective for posing. So I'm overall happy with it. And of course the exposed joint works well for a mech dragon. The like shoulder or chest area of the dragon uses like these big panel pieces that can be opened up and moved out of the way. Way. Hidden behind them are these weapons that serve as accessories for the minifigures in this set. It's a classic Lego saw piece with a trans red axe blade piece at the front. That's a very cool part, it came in a lot of the rebooted sets, but I'm glad to see it here as well. And these just connect on a little clip, so you can remove them very easily, give them to the minifigures in the set, but when they're actually riding on the dragon, this is a place to store them away. And that's present on both sides of the build. You can see I open that up, there's the weapon behind it. And now properly moving on to the dragon's back, here's another part that's able to transform. There's a little module right here that's actually not connected to anything, it just sort of slides in, so that could very easily be removed. And what this is is actually a little prison for a captured ninja. You can see it's got a sticker on the top and bars at the front, and these bars can actually hinge open. And with them open, there's enough room in there to fit a minifigure, so I could place Lloyd inside, close it back up around him, and then place the build back in the dragon with Lloyd captured. If you watch my reviews frequently, you'll know I love jail cell features like this. They were super prevalent in sets like from this era and even before. And we get them sometimes nowadays, but not nearly as much as we used to. But yeah, that's amazing for play, and it's also quite good like in terms of representing the show, because this does actually happen in the show. So it's neat to have that consistency, because usually little play features like this don't actually show up like in both forms. And I like that it's a separate module, but it also tucks away real nicely. I like that quite a bit. Then behind that's the main seating area for whoever's piloting the mech dragon. You can see there's a little pretty console at the front, but nothing too crazy going on there. There's how it looks to have Tech Wu actually standing in there. His beard prevents him from sitting, but he stands just fine. And then of course next to that we have the wings, which might be the coolest part of this build. Now the wings themselves are very static, like there's not a ton of movement you can get out of them. There's like a little bit of give to the actual so you can see I'm like wobbling it a little bit, but there's no like actual joints or anything that allow the entire wing structure to flap. However, these individual black blades can move up and down if you want, and there's a little bit of movement on this gray one, though not very much. I love how these look, by the way. The black blades have like this diamond-shaped geometry, while the gray blades are a little more straight, so it creates some nice variation, and it captures like the whole high-tech vibe of Ninjago Rebooted. But the best part here definitely has to be the play feature, so of course, one of the main features of this build are these giant blades at the front. And these, of course, you could spin, I mean, it wouldn't make sense if you couldn't spin them. However, there's a really 
really cool way to make them spin very fast. If I pull down this purple piece right here, it'll start spinning as it goes up, and then if I slowly let it go back down, it'll start spinning again. And you can just do that over and over again in both directions to have it spin both ways. The way that works is actually quite clever. You can see there's this gear piece right here, and that's visible from the top, which normally would look a bit ugly, but for a mech dragon in the rebooted season, that fits in perfectly well. It's both a functional part of the build and also an aesthetic part of the build. But then the underside of the spinning blade has another gear, and they got the geometry just right, so if you move the blade piece up, it'll just brush against the other gear. But because that gear is so much bigger, it's enough to make the blade go pretty fast. And that's present on both sides of the build too, which is really awesome. So that detail overall is probably my favorite aspect of this entire build. Moving underneath looking at the front legs, I mean, they're fine, I guess. I don't really have a ton to say about them, they're very, very basic. The lower leg connects to the upper leg on a rigid tactic joint, so there's a little bit of movement you can get there, you can kick it back, you can spin it around if you want. And then, of course, the foot itself is also on a ball joint. That foot, by the way, is an SCCBS part, because, again, that's just the thing they were using at that time. It makes the legs of the dragons we got back then look very generic compared to what we get today, because I think being restricted to bricks leads to a lot more creativity. At this time, just most of the big creatures like this use these feet. And that doesn't mean they're bad, and honestly, I think they fit a mech dragon pretty well, because they do have a sort of robotic vibe to them. But yeah, it's mostly one part, I don't have a ton to say there. The little toes at the front are a cute touch, though. I'm happy those were included. But now we come to what's probably my least favorite part of the build, and that's the back. Back. And I don't mean back as in like back of the dragon, I mean as in like back half of the build. Don't know how I should differentiate that when speaking. But this, I don't know man, I just don't love. It just kind of feels like they ran out of parts because it becomes very thin, lots of studs exposed, very open too. The one like kind of cool aspect about this is like these doors can open up, and then you have a bunch of exposed studs on the inside right here. And this sort of serves as like a troop carrier area. You load that up with ninjoids and this is how you can move them around. And that's an idea that I like in theory. Troop carrier, that's awesome. Great for play and also can look cool for display too. But I feel like they just didn't do it well enough. Would have liked a lot more going on in this back right here. I would have liked the actual doors that hinge open to be a little more interesting. And they also only connect on with one clip, so they feel very loose, like very easy to remove. Now part of the reason it's so easy to remove them is because they are actually meant to be detached. And one of the ninja minifigures in the set actually has a bracket on the back. So you can take that door piece, attach it to that bracket, and now it sort of serves as a flyer for the ninjoid, which I mean is definitely a cool idea, don't get me wrong, that is good for play, but is it worth the back of the dragon looking the way it does? I'm not so sure. Especially because you only get one ninjoid with a neck bracket in this set, and two of those flyers that detach, yet you can only use one of them with the parts in this set. Again, it just feels like there should be more here. And I know it's 2014, right? It's not going to be up to modern LEGO design standards, but even for 2014, I think this is very weak. Especially when you even compare it to the front half of the build. The front half is so bulky, so detailed, this just kind of feels like what's left over, which is very disappointing to see. There are some stickered parts here at the very least. This one I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be. Maybe that's the map of Hiroshi's Labyrinth? That would be my only assumption. Though if it's something I'm not remembering from Reboot, let me know in the comments, guys. Reboot's this season I have watched a few times, but it's one I try to avoid watching at all costs. So yeah, that might have appeared in the show and I'm just not recognizing it. You got a bunch of numbers on the side, though. On the opposite side, though, the sticker's a lot more obvious. You can see there's a little lever right here, and you can assume that's what's pulled to actually open these doors on the side, considering the fact it's got, like, a little picture of the doors there. So the stickers are a cute way to add some extra detail, but I don't know, in the entirety of everything, it just feels like it needs more. I do like the angle on the back at the very least. I'll give that credit. That's pretty cool. Oh, and there's also a missile launcher at the top, which I almost forgot to mention. If you guys have never seen these before, they came in tons of sets when I was a kid. I believe they originally came from Bionicle. But yeah, this was, like, a the play feature back in the day. This was before stud shooters were thing. There is a modern version of this piece that we get sometimes, but it's not nearly as common as it was back then. But anyway, you pull back on like this little knob right here, and this giant missile will shoot out. This piece is huge, and it always shoots out with a ton of force. I was always scared as a kid that I would shoot my eye and like really hurt myself, so I get why it's not as common nowadays, but it is definitely a lot of fun. The back legs here are fine, I guess. They're very chunky. I like that there's a little more purple here to tie that color into more of the build. They're not connected with the ball joints, so there's no articulation on them. They're just locked in place with these Technic pieces. In terms of posing, that's a little bit lame to see, like I would have liked articulation there, but I assume it's the way it is to help support the build because yeah, this is a very heavy build, especially at the front, and the front legs do have articulation, so this allows the build to still hold itself up, so I don't mind that. And more of those SCCBS feet pieces down here, though these don't have the toes at the front that the front feet have. And then the tail here is good, it's a very classic technique. Ninjago started using it in 2012, I believe. But yeah, the tail's built in three separate sections, there's a gear at the back right here, so you can spin this and the tail itself will like shake back and forth. That's a ton of fun to do, I loved doing that on the snake truck when I was a kid, and I didn't have this set when I was a kid, I just got it recently. But very similar thing, so it's still a lot of fun. I would have liked the tail's maybe a little bit longer, considering how big this dragon is. Like maybe just one more segment would have added a little bit, but then they would have had to raise it up a little bit higher. So yeah, I get why it is the way it is. This is solid enough, I'm happy with it. So overall with this build, I think the best thing 
thing to say about it is that I respect it a lot. It's definitely far from like my favorite Ninjago set ever, and I think there's a lot of issues with it, especially in the back section, but there's also a lot of things I really admire about this. I think the wings look really cool, the whole spinning blade play feature is amazing, and while the head's like far from the best we've ever gotten, I really respect the fact that it's the first brick built dragon head we've ever gotten. So all things considered, it's far from my favorite, but one that I'm very happy to have in my collection. But I'll talk about the dragon a little bit more at the end of this video, for now let's take a look at this, the side build. This is Lloyd and Sensei Garbodon's car, or I guess technically Nia's car, and right off the bat, one thing I really respect about this is it's not specifically themed around a character. Because in modern Ninjago, if you're getting a Lloyd vehicle, it's gonna be green, a Kai vehicle is gonna be red, a Nia vehicle is gonna be blue or red or silver or whatever she uses. This though, I mean, I guess the white sorta of ties in with Sensei Garmadon, but he honestly doesn't use a lot of it on his minifigure. This mostly just feels like an original vehicle that those two happen to be driving. And while the themed vehicles are cool, don't get me wrong, I don't know, this is kind of refreshing to see. It almost makes it feel more realistic, but on the flip side of that, it also makes it feel more generic. It lacks a lot of the personality that the more themed vehicles have. These stickers at the front seem to take some design inspiration from the Ultrasonic Raider, which that's pretty cool to see, and that's a cool tie-in too, because of course Nia created both vehicles in the show. And looking at the front, like very simple front bumper, got some lights here, got some swords, which again, swords on a ninja vehicle, very common thing today. But back in 2014, there wasn't like a ton of ninja vehicles, we had a few, but this was still a relatively new and like novel idea at the time. Of course, big windshield here that can open up and room for a minifigure to fit inside. There's how it looks to have Sensei Garmin on in there, close it back up around him. Moving back, we come to the other seat where I can have Lloyd sit down. It's got these two big imaginary cannons on the side, as well as like a grappling hook, which is a flick missile. Of course, you could push that out or flick it and it'll shoot it out. And there's a little bit of movement to this too, so the back of the seat can be like moved down to move those turrets up, so that way you can aim at something in the air, namely the mech dragon. And then this entire section can also rotate, which is very cool in theory, but in execution it feels a little bit sloppy, and that's just because you have to move the cannons up and out of the way or else they're going to collide with the front. And it will still happen even if you do move them, but it happens a lot earlier if you don't. Like, look at this. If I try to turn it forward like this, then it breaks off. I definitely think those should have been raised up a little bit higher, but it's not the end of the world. Something else cool here is there's a little flag at the top with a sticker with Nia's symbol on it. And that's a small thing, but I don't know, I really appreciate that, because again, in the show, Lloyd and Garmadon are the only ones to ever use this vehicle, but technically it was created by Nia. Now in modern Ninjago, for example, like uh, Lloyd's mech from the first Dragon's Rising Wave, in the show, that's not his mech. He does get it later on, but it wasn't made by him, but yet, inexplicitly, it still has his symbols on it when he gets it. This though, this is cool, Nia's not in this set, Nia never drove this vehicle in the show, but it shows that no, it was originally her vehicle, so her symbol's on it. By the way, I know that uh, sticker application's not the best, I bought the second hand, that's how it was applied. I'll probably get replacement stickers at some point, but I didn't want to delay making the entire review just for one sticker. But then we come to what's probably the best play feature of this build. You can see there's a little bit of Technic sticking out the back with like these exhausts. That inherently just looks cool, I like that design. But if you push in on them a little bit, these cannons on the side will go up and out. And then if you push even harder, it'll actually launch a missile. And that's the case on both sides, you could do them together or independently. And that's so much fun, I love how smooth that is. It does lead to a lot of exposed Technic at the back here, which like isn't the prettiest in the world, but honestly the play feature is a lot of fun, I think it's worth it for that. The missiles don't really shoot out like straight, they more go up, but in my opinion it's more about the fun of like actually launching them than anything. But I think that's most of what I have to show you for Lloyd's buggy, I guess there's the underside if you want. The wheels are fine, it allows it to roll around. I don't know, I feel like in 2014 when this came out I would have been like, this feels boring and a little bit lame, it doesn't have a ton of personality to it. But now in 2024, now that we have had so many like Ninjago vehicles that are just green for Lloyd, red for Kai, it's kind of refreshing to see just a generic vehicle that's not specifically meant for anybody. But yeah, even still, this is nothing spectacular. Cannons are a cool feature, but everything else is fairly standard in my opinion. Nothing about it is too bad, but nothing stands out a ton either. It's perfectly serviceable for a side build. Here are the first two minifigures in the set. We have Lloyd in his techno robes, which are of course the main suits from Ninjago Rebooted, as well as our first ever Sensei Garmadon minifigure. Lloyd weirdly does not come with his armor here, which I don't believe he wore in the entirety of the show, but he definitely had it for a little bit. Personally, I would have preferred if that was here, because if you don't like it, you can always remove it. So having more is typically better, but still, the figure looks good even without it. The Rebooted suits are far from my favorite ninja suits of all time. There are some things I like about them. Number one, the mask piece. This was the first introduction of the half mask, and it is a very very, very cool part. And because of that, we also got the ninja's hair pieces for the first time, too. And of course, the original Lloyd hair piece is the old Anakin hair piece, but recolored in blonde. And that does look great on this guy, like it fits really well. Of the rebooted suits, Lloyd's probably one of my favorites in terms of the torso. He's just got a really cool design going on. I love all the gold going on to sort of combine the gold ninja idea with the green ninja idea. And the like golden energy burst on the side looks super cool. I also like how they bring over some design elements from the kimono robes with these buckles on the side. It creates some cool consistency if you like look at all the suits lined up together. But the biggest 
biggest issue with the rebooted suits, and this is the case with all of them, is that there's just no leg printing at all, and I just don't know why that is. These are the only Ninjago Ninja suits ever to not have leg printing, so it makes them really stand out as like not being super detailed. And depending on the minifigure, on some it looks better, on others it looks worse. I don't think the plain green legs are like terrible on Lloyd, like it's fine, but even still, some sort of belt or something would have been nice to see. And again, I really like the back torso print here with Lloyd's like dragon symbol with this energy bursting around it. And I think this is one of only two sets this guy came in. The other set was very cheap, so it's not like a super hard minifigure to find, but it is still cool that there was a second way to get him. And then there he is with the hair and half mask removed. This was actually a new face print for this wave. Previously, he just used the young Lloyd face print from the 2012 sets. And I think the expression's fine, it's just like a very stern face. It matches the other ninja pretty well, but it's obviously not very expressive either. The modern face prints are a lot better, but this is just what we had at the time. And there's no alternate face on this minifigure either. So a good minifigure overall, I'm happy he was included, but not one of my favorites either. Then we have our first ever Sensei Garmadon minifigure, and one of only two of these guys to ever exist. This guy's genuinely awesome, I really really like this one. He's got a cool twist on like the outfits we've seen Wu wear, because he has to look like a sensei while also being distinctly his own. And I really like the black robes with the green trim on top. The black calls back to his past as Lord Garmadon, the green obviously references the fact that he's Lloyd's father, but then the lighter gray and white robes on top help to show that yeah, this is a good guy now. And it all comes together to look very elegant. I especially love how the robe drapes over the torso into the legs. That's some cool consistency. You can see he does use the same hairpiece Lloyd does though in dark bluish gray, which is another great recolor. And his face print's actually really detailed. I like all the wrinkles and the little eyebrows too. And then turning him around, there's like his back torso print. He's got like this little golden dragon symbol. And just like Lloyd, there is no alternate face here, but there's a look at the full front face print. Yeah, this guy's really great. I do think I slightly prefer his 2015 version, but of course this came first. And he is exclusive to this set, so he's definitely one of the draws here. Then here are the next two minifigures, our villains in the set, the Nindroids. And we have General Cryptor on the left right here, and then just like a generic Nindroid warrior. These guys are fine, I guess. Nindroids are probably my least favorite, like, basic Ninjago villain army of all time. I just don't find their designs super interesting, and I think conceptually the entire idea is just not my favorite, like, Robot Ninja. I don't know, it's a little too silly for me. Even as a kid when these came out, this like almost got me out of Ninjago. And even visually, like I mean, there's a few things I like about them, but overall I still find them quite boring. Their hood piece is at the very least interesting. You can see it's sort of modeled after the ZX hood, like there's that little star in the center. But then it's got this robotic eye that goes over one side, and that's actually really good printing. I like the way it wraps all the way around, and the little eye at the front looks super cool. And then I actually quite like the armor piece on Cryptor. The only issue is, he's the only minifigure that actually used it. But it creates some nice bulk and gives his torso a really cool texture, and I like that I can hold swords at the back just like the ninja's armor can. But if I take that off, you can see the full head, torso, and leg print. And I don't know, I just feel nothing about this. I mean, black, purple, and red is inherently a very cool color scheme, but I feel like they didn't use the color scheme enough. I would have liked more purple and more parts of the figure. The trim is nice, but it's just not enough. The metallic printing is, like, nice to get, but I can't lie, I just look at this figure and I feel just very little. I do like the emblem on the back, I'll give it that, that's pretty cool. I do appreciate that there's a back head print here, because, like, the hood's always gonna be up, so that, like, doesn't need to be there at all. So I'm glad that was included. But yeah, I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan of this guy, and Cryptor is the best one. The generic Ninjoid has the same exact hood piece and the same exact leg piece. There's that neck bracket that I talked about earlier, and there's a full look of the face print and torso print, and again, eh. I think that's the other thing, is they're all so similar, even General Cryptor, I mean, he gets the armor, but that's it. The face print's slightly different, but you can't even tell when the hood's on. The torso's different, but looks similar enough. The armor piece is really the only thing to differentiate them. So yeah, overall, some of the weakest villains in my opinion. It is cool to get two here, would've liked maybe more than two, considering how expensive this set is, but I'll talk about that at the end of this video. And I think that's probably all I have to say on the Nindroids. And then here's the final minifigure in the set, Tech Wu, who is yet another exclusive. And this guy is also very, very cool. Again, conceptually, I think this is weird, I don't know why they decided to turn Wu into a robot, but that's a criticism of the writing of Rebooted, not of this minifigure. In terms of just the minifigure itself, this is actually very, very cool. Again, no light printing, just like the ninja have, which is disappointing to see, but I don't think Wu needs it as much as the ninja do, though I guess it would have been kind of cool to see like an inverse of the old like Wu legs, like black legs with a white belt on top, that would have been awesome. I like the switch to the black beard and the silver hat, both of those are great parts. The face print here is awesome, it does like take Wu's classic face and sort of corrupts it. He's got a black eyebrow now instead of white and like this metal plating on one side of the face. Those like red robotic eyes are super striking, but you can see he still has his white beard underneath everything. And just like the Ninjoids, there is a little bit of back head printing here, just showing like how that metal plating wraps around. Unfortunately, there is still like that gap in the center right here, which is the case with most LEGO minifigures. Every now and then we'll get a figure that wraps all the way around the side of the head, but that's super rare even today. So it would have been nice to see, but it's not something I expect. 
And then I love the back torso print too, again more of that like metallic plating going over his torso. But where a symbol used to be, it's been replaced by the ninjuid symbol with a little bit of purple. And I love that he sticks to the black and white color scheme, but with that slight purple trim. It all comes together to make a super cool minifigure, and yet another great exclusive in this set. Unfortunately, he is the last minifigure in this set, which is a criticism of mine I would have liked to see a bit more here. Maybe one or two more ninja, and definitely some more ninjuids, I mean this is literally a troop carrier, and you only have three bad guys in the set. I think with like three or four more minifigures, this set could actually be a pretty solid value for the price, but with only including 5, I'm not so sure. But now, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? I hate to say this, but this set, in my opinion, overall is pretty weak. Because one thing I haven't touched on yet is the price, and obviously this set is 10 years old, it is not on shelves anymore. But even in 2014, and in fact especially in 2014, this price was a little ridiculous. $90 for this is silly. It should have been probably 70 max back then. Like, even if this came out for $90 today, I would be like, eh, that feels a little bit small for 90 Because the back of the dragon feels unfinished, the side build's fine, but I don't know, it just kind of fluffs up the piece count. And only 5 minifigures, I mean, there definitely should have been more. And I mean, two of the minifigures in the set are exclusive, being Tech Wu and Sensei Garmadon, and that is cool to see. But even still, yeah, this is a $70 set, absolutely, especially in 2014. And then the aftermarket prices today aren't the worst, but they're also, like, not the best either. This was on shelves for a very long time, like, nobody wanted to buy this set, and that's why I didn't have it. It's one of the few rebooted sets I didn't get. And most of the time when I do these throwback reviews, I'm like, man, I really wish I had this as a kid. This one, eh, less so. Like, I like it, don't get me wrong, I'm happy to finally have it in my collection. But when I'm looking at the totality of every Ninja I've said ever. This does some cool things, but also leaves a lot to be desired. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And as I said at the beginning of this video, let me know in the comments which site you want to see a throwback review on next. But as for this video, I think that's about all I have to say. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.